some products are just exceptional and so much exceptional that we are probably already using it. I have been also using them for last 30 days. It is absolutely a free product. And if you are already a developer, this can take your developer profile skill to the next level. Or if you are already working in the company, this can be a next big leap for your product in the company. Let me go ahead and walk you through the scenario. I'm pretty sure you are already planning or probably already using some of the products using OpenAI, planning to use their APIs maybe. Or maybe you are using APIs of Anthropic, Cloudflare, Mux, or similar kind of product. But I'm pretty sure you are not just using the raw APIs of that product, you are looking forward to use the SDKs of that product. Yes, today we are going to be talking about SDKs. This is such a knowledge which is probably nobody talks about it, nobody briefly touch about this product. But I'm pretty sure you have wondered one day or the other that how can I build SDKs of my own product? Let me give you a scenario. Maybe you are a developer looking for the next big tech job or probably switching for the job or your company builds uh, API centric products. Now in all of these cases, it would be super nice that if we have SDKs being available to our end user, surely they can consume directly the APIs, but having the SDKs gives the added advantage of the code suggestions and many such things uh, which developers love. In today's video, I will walk you through that how I was able to create SDKs in Node in Python. These are the two which I tried, but there are so many other features that are available. Like I can build my SDKs in Golang as well and even in Java as well. So in this video, I will walk you through that how this amazing product is powering not only just us, but they are already powering OpenAI, Anthropic, Mux and Cloudflare and is free to use so that you can use this product and build your own SDKs. So for the next time, if you are building any backend application, I will walk you through end-to-end -end guide what you really need. I will give you demos and repository in this video so that you can also have your own SDKs. And trust me, it sounds really cool when your resume or your any upgraded resume looks like that, hey, we have SDKs available for our backend or for our product. It's really nice. I'm super excited to introduce you this cutting edge product and super happy that it's all free. Yeah, you can use it absolutely for free. Of course, there are restrictions, but it's not much. This product aims that I will charge to the companies who are actually into that domain. But for individual developer, it's more than free tier. It's, it's very generous on that part. So let me walk you through what that company is. And you will absolutely love this. So the product is Stainless API. I really like the name. And notice here, generate best in class SDKs. The way how they generate the SDKs is super crazy. You don't have to do any extraordinary work. You just focus on writing your backend, really nice backend with the documentation and everything. And they take care of rest of all the things. So much so that they are already powering OpenAI, Anthropic, Cloudflare and so many lists going on like Runway and Mux and even Grok. They are all shipping their SDKs via this. We also shipped our SDK for the free API in both Node and in Python using this product. And I'm, I was using the all, all free tier here. So let me walk you through a couple of things. Yes, we can push our SDKs with Node, Python, whatever we wish. But I thought I mostly write either Python or JavaScript. So we're going to go ahead and use with them. So notice here, what you have to do is, if you really want to go work with that, go ahead and provide your open API specs. I will walk you through that how the open API specs looks like because one of our open source project, which was trending recently, and I highly recommend you to please give a star on that, uh, was having this open API specs uh, already. So I just copied that whole specs, injected in the stainless SDK, and that's it. That is all I do. And rest of the all updates, I will walk you through. It generates your SDK, not only it generates them, it also distributes it through the NPM platform, through the PyPy platform and other platforms which are available for the each languages. You can also go ahead and customize all of this and inject your own code. But it mo major of the majority of the time, it does all this for you. And publishing, this is where I find the most interesting part. It can not only publish to NPM, but you can also publish to JSR. This is a relatively new registry for JavaScript packages and PyPy and Maven, all of this. I didn't use the Maven one. I actually used NPM and the PyPy. I tried and tested it out and I thought it's a good fun one. And yes, they are powering uh, OpenAI. They are powering a whole lot of company. That made me first interested in, okay, this product exists and this is so much easy to use. So I thought, let me share this with you. 
So let me walk you through with this. So first of all, what is this and how we're going to use this? So first of all, this is our free open source project, free API. This helps you to learn about APIs, whether you are using React, React Native, Angular, any front end, or if you are a seasoned backend developer, want to elevate your backend skills, this is a production grade backends that we have put up. In this, if you just go ahead and uh, look up this, just go ahead and click on this big cat, uh, the mascot of the GitHub basically, and you come up here. Uh, this project is known as API Hub on our GitHub. And if you go into the source, you will find that we are actually maintaining this project really nicely. And we have this swagger.yml. This swagger allows us to have all the thing being actively used and we, we generate our own documentation based on this. If you click on the raw, uh, it's a pretty decently sized uh, big file here. So we have all of this. Now, all you have to do is copy all of this, go up here and I created an account. This is my free account. All you have to do is click on the new project and uh, let's just say we want to call this as test and uh, the URL. So go ahead and paste this. You can upload the file as well, uh, but the best part is it just gets everything from the URL. No, this is not the URL. So we'll just go ahead and say, hey, this is my URL. Uh, go ahead and copy and paste this one. And that's it. Just go ahead and click on create this. Through your swagger.yaml, it is going to take everything that's there. It will do its magic. And after that, there is a small step in which you have to uh, link your accounts for the NPM as well as for the PyPy. Yes, that's a small process, not a big deal. It's just linking the account, that's it. I already linked my account to test this product and notice here we have free API, the node and the Python. And don't worry about these crosses. They are a little bit uh, new code is there which needs to be built and pushed. I'll walk you through with that as well. But if I go ahead and click on this uh, project here, free API app, in a few seconds, this is going to load. Uh, probably my internet is bad. Come on, load this faster. There we go. Now it's here. Now notice here, this is the Node API library. I will walk you through. Yes, this library actually exists in the NPM packages as well. So if we go ahead and open up the NPM. Let's open up this. And if I can just search for free API app. And there we go, free API app. And it just published, it's ready, you can use it. If you wish, you can go ahead and run npm install free API app, and this is how it works. Now it allows all of the user to write code like this. Import free API from the free API, and all of the data, methods, authentication, everything that we support is available here. We can just go ahead and create a client from the free API app. I didn't wrote this code, I didn't wrote this functionality. This is available out of the box to me in this SDK. And now I can go ahead and create functions, async functions, of course. And now this client can actually talk to any of the methods or the things that we have gone. So for example, we have authentications in which we support a lot of things. It just calls the register. Provide the data which is required as a parameter. And that's it. It will just go ahead and register the user. You can go ahead and try up here. Look at the interactive docs. We actually do the exact same thing. So if I go ahead and check out our authentication section. Notice here we do have a register user. Uh, you can go ahead and use API to call this route. Surely you can go ahead and do that. We have interactive docs which does all of this. But this is much cool that user can now use directly my product, my backend uh, with the SDKs. This is always an added advantage. And especially when you're building products like uh, payment gateway integration, uh, something like Stripe, Razorpay, having the SDK gives much more reliability to your end user. So I just added this and notice here, it is published and all. And I didn't publish it. It was all published through the stainless API. And notice here, uh, it gives you all this. It is generated with the stainless. So no, no headache on me, no extra engineering work on me. It does it automatically. So if you're building any backend project next or you're following any of my tutorial, I highly recommend to generate your SDK uh, because the pricing wise, if I go ahead and work with that, so let me just walk you through with the pricing because I'm pretty sure you're interested in that as well. I'll just open this up in incognito and pricing. So the pricing, this is more than enough to showcase uh, your project. There is one live, live SDK available. So I'm pretty sure you are not building any open source project just like me. You're probably building to showcase it in the Node ecosystem or in the Python ecosystem. Go ahead and have your own SDK. 50 endpoints is already generous enough and I think it's going to be decent project that you're building up. If you have more projects, then obviously they are more focused on the startup and business. For individual developers, no credit card required, nothing. So I actually used this one. And I went into this and I said, hey, in the trial, they actually allows you to do uh, more fun stuff. So I just work with that. 
I pasted my OpenAPI uh, specs here, connected uh, my uh, repositories or NPM repositories for the node and the Python as well. And it does everything for me. I don't have to do anything in that. Notice here in the free API and everything it generates. Now I will also walk you through that how it looks like. Uh, there are a couple of options how you can do it. I created fresh new repositories for them. So this whole thing, notice here, all are available. Yeah, this whole thing. Uh, yes, it does took a little bit of the time to work with that. Now let me walk you through with this. So this one is the Python SDK which we published and this is uh, the Node SDK that we published. And here's the all code. I didn't wrote a single line of it. Uh, Stainless API did all of the work, even managing the documentation and the readme file and timeouts, average user, everything did nothing. Now, interestingly, what you're going to notice, there are a couple of pull requests. As your package gets update or your open specs uh, API gets update, it actually creates more of this one. So notice here, this is a release. Automatic release are also being managed. So anything new code generation is being done. They actually use AI heavily, of course. They will. They actually are in touch with OpenAI and Anthropic, two of the best leagues. And notice here, all of this work is done. Uh, some checks were not successful. Some were successful. But you can go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and create a merge pull request. I'll just go ahead and merge this one. And yes, please confirm the merge. Uh, nope, don't want to save anything. And there we go. We have merged this one, so should be all looking good. I don't even have to check much of, like obviously do check, but it's not much of a big deal. And all of my APIs and SDKs are updated. If any changes are being made in my backend, I can just update my spec file and that's it. It just brings everything up here. Now let's go ahead and work with that. So work on the node part. And there we go. All good. Looks good. Now, interestingly, you can just click on guess with the AI. You can automate that. A lot of things are done. What I'm super happy about is it, it takes everything from here and works with that. So uh, save and build SDK. This is the only button I have to click. There is no local storage change as of now, but I can just click on this. And through this, I can publish everywhere on every platform that is there. Now, let me show you a couple of more interesting stuffs here. So I can just click on this plus button. And notice here, we can publish Go SDKs. Java is still request access, Kotlin request access. Currently that I'm using is Node and Python and eventually I'll probably drop either one of them because I want to use the free tier. So I'll probably go with Node and we'll create more tutorials to use that. Notice here, Ruby, Terraform, C Sharp. I'll probably never use C Sharp. I rarely use it. But anyways, I'll mostly stay in this ecosystem or ecozone and that's it. And now if I want to add my additional code, I can just go ahead and add this code. There's diagnostic, builds. So I can also see how the code quality of my application and all of this is there. And uh, notice here, the diagnostics are there. Some of the endpoints are ignored because obviously I'm in a free tier as well as some of the open API specs, if the indentation is not correct or it's not according to the specs as they really look for the hard code, hard specs, so they don't allow any loose endpoints and all of that. So this is all what we have gone through and notice here we are configuring production, build, release, all of this we are doing. Super happy that what I was able to generate with that. And again, if you are new here, I highly, highly recommend to go ahead and try out that we did all of this and I was able to share all of this with you. So go ahead and look for the npm install free api.app. It's pretty cool actually. And again, they do manage all of this. I think this should be updated now. And not yet, probably, but very soon it's going to publish. It takes sometimes a little bit of the time. So, all right, this is all I wanted to share. A very quick update to share you all of this. And again, in the settings, hopefully I don't disclose anything. Uh, that's okay. Uh, you have to link up your NPM repository and all of that. So, all right. So, a couple of advice I can give you or some of the ideas that I can give you. See, building SDKs is something that is usually not there in any resume. And if you have even tiny bit idea of how these SDKs are being built, you can just always go ahead and look into the code repository as well. This will 100% give you additional advantage. If you're building any kind of backend in Node or any such similar thing, try to write your Swagger files. The Swagger files should be according to the open API specs. This will give you additional advantage that you are not just somebody who writes the code. You are somebody who understands the code as well as understands the importance of writing a good solid documentation for other developers. 
And once you are doing this much of hard effort, why not to just go ahead and use some of the tools which are available online and have some extra stars in your resume. One such star is SDK. Go ahead and publish your own SDK. Now, just before watching this video, how many of the resume have you seen that have their own backend projects and have their own published SDK? This gives an edit star. And again, if you're working on or planning to work in some companies which are like payment gateway integration or some level of open AI or any kind of API first product, which are a lot of there are out there like video SDK and whatnot. So many of the companies are there in India right now as well. And when you tell them that, hey, I have published my own SDK, definitely uh, you will get an advantage. And then, of course, it's not just publishing the SDK. Go ahead and read the repository. The whole code is available to you, what that code is doing, as well as some of the interesting tools like Stainless uh, AI. So go ahead and check out this Stainless API. And I will be putting up the link in the description for all the free APIs, Stainless uh, API as well. Uh, their blogs is also nice. Go ahead and check out their docs as well. Uh, this is what I really love about this. Let me show you that. So they give you the whole idea that, okay, go ahead and put up the stainless config or the open AI specs and using the stainless, you can just go ahead and keep on publishing it. For a really big corporate, this is an advantage. You don't have to worry about anything. And what I really like about this is this thing. I can generate the SDK, put it into a separate repository and this publish to NPA. Separate repository, this publish to the Python package. Notice here, this is exactly what we are doing. A separate free API Python SDK. A separate Free API Node SDK. This is what they recommend. I checked out their docs and this is how they work with that. Again, uh, just a quick video can do this. These are products which are usually hidden, but again, not anymore. I'm here to show you all of that. So this is my recommendation. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you want me to introduce you with more such hidden tools, do let me know in the comment section. I would work really hard to find such tools and give you added advantage for your next big job. That is it for this video. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next one.